There is a bond in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gilead to save the sin sick soul if you cannot preach like Peter if you cannot pray like Paul you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and I think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bond. Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. There is a Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. Yes, he will save the sin sick soul oh he will save my sin sick soul we confess that space between where we put the world only by our lonesome only by our lonesome won't you knock down all the walls that we built stable tip them both Forgive our sins, reignite. 
tip them over and restore them into sturdy dinner table. We confess that we Good evening, and thank you all for joining us for this very special gathering to celebrate the mission that we share, working towards a just world where all are fed. I'm Daniel Rift. I'm the director for ELCA World Hunger and Lutheran Disaster Response Funds. I want to start this evening by thanking Rachel Kurtz for sharing the gift of her music for those who came early um, and uh, to welcome you all tonight. We are gathered to celebrate the ways that we meet Jesus in the work that we share, to the ways that we are a witness to God's love in this world. ELCA World Hunger has always been about more than money, about sharing of resources. It's been about food. It's been about hope. It's been about the way in which we are faithful witness, but it's also been about sharing the resources that God has entrusted uh, for our collective work. So tonight, we have an opportunity to support this work, and it comes at a critical moment in the ministry. ELCA World Hunger depends upon $20 million of income and giving each year. We are a little more than three quarters of the way through the year and a little less than halfway through uh, that goal. And so tonight we have an opportunity to make a difference to stake a claim for hope into the future, to stand with our companions in our communities around this country and around the world. Tonight, we would love to see $250,000 or more raised, and we have a group of donors who want to encourage that. For the first $100,000 that you send in, they will be matched dollar for dollar. You can send in your gifts, uh, by going online to elca.org slash end hunger, or by calling 800-638-3522. That number, that reference will be on your uh, screen. We will stick around this evening to be able to welcome people, uh, people's gifts even after the event. So let's begin the generosity of the evening and the celebration that we have in this special night, this season, this season when many organizations consider what it is that they are doing to end hunger in this world, to end extreme hunger, as we gather together around this world through World Food Day this Saturday. We wanted to make sure to celebrate the way that God has called us as church to be engaged in this work in unique and special ways, in places where others can't meet. This commitment that we have had longstanding to eradicate hunger in the world. We want you to join us as we hold together as a church to work to end hunger, not as a specialized ministry, but as core to the mission of who we are, a people of faith, putting our faith to work. And so it is that we begin and we conclude this evening with the encouragement and the leadership of church's presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. Good evening, Bishop Eaton. Good evening, Dan. Thank you for the introduction and hello to everybody all across the country and perhaps the world. Let's start with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. Good and gracious God, you have created a beautiful, diverse, abundant world, and you yourself feed us every day. In your abundance, you make sure that your love is inexhaustible and that, in fact, 
through your son, you have become our bread. Bless us tonight as we seek to be your hands and feet in this mission in the world. And as we seek to help other people know your abundant life. In Jesus name, amen. Well, once again, welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you're here, um, wherever here might be. Uh, it's really an exciting thing for us to do. Um, and as you'll hear throughout tonight's program, the work of ELCA World Hunger is not only emergency aid, but it also is sustainable livelihoods for people. And the way that we participate and, and, and bring that about with companion churches or in our own, our own uh, country is, is just truly amazing. And it, it's because of people like you. And tonight to help us with this interesting, uh, enthralling um, uh, evening um, is um, a man who has many, many gifts. I, he's a musician, he's a world traveler, but I discovered that his superpower is <laughs> that he can go to any terrain in any climate with only one backpack and still look <laughs> good. So please join me in welcoming uh, Rick Steves. Rick? Thank you, Bishop. And you're right. I love to pack light. I like to pack light so I can connect with our world. And uh, the less encumbered I am, the more nimble I am, the more I can get out there, and the more I gain an appreciation of how we are all children of God. And when I come home, I take that with me. It's my favorite souvenir. And I'm so thankful to be part of this team today. Think of it. I, I get to join us now. I've had, I've had a chance to talk to some wonderful inspirational leaders in our church, and we're doing something that we care so much about, you know, doing Jesus's will here on earth to love our neighbor. We're going to meet some new friends tonight. We're going to honor one man in our, in our ranks who has dedicated his entire career to fighting hunger and has made such a contribution. We're going to enjoy some beautiful music. And together, we're going to support a ministry that's really close to my heart, Fighting Hunger. We're going to be supporting ELCA World Hunger. Now, last year, we got together, and we did amazing. More than, We raised more money than any year yet in the 50-year history of ELCA World Hunger. And it's my hope and my prayer that we're going to do even better today. You know, when times are tough, it's, it's kind of human nature for, for people to circle the wagons and turn inward. And, you know, according to our faith, I think when times are tough, that's more reason than ever to reach out and love our neighbors. And when we are people of faith, re regardless of what kind of religion you are, if you believe in God, you know that we are all children of God. And if we're all children of God, that means people across the street are, are no more precious than people across the sea and we are a family together. So today, we're going to not circle the wagons, but we're going to reach out, and we're going to do that with gusto. So I am so proud, and I'm so thankful for the leadership of our presiding bishop. And uh, Liz, if, um, if I could just ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of sadness and, and a lot of fear in our society these days when it comes to the impact of COVID, uh, people who are hungry, people are struggling with poverty. And of course, in a privileged nation like our own, if there's those kind of challenges, imagine the challenges farther away to more difficult corners of our planet. What gives you hope? Well, Rick, you're right. Um, it it was been, has been tough here. Um, and we, at the beginning of the pandemic and at the beginning of the lockdown, were really concerned if congregations would be able to survive. And the part that gives me hope is that even with our own adversity, with people losing jobs, uh, the, the, the threat of disease, nevertheless, this church continued to be generous. And as we've already heard, 2020, a pandemic year, was our, our most um, generous year yet for ELCA mm -hmm. World Hunger. You know, Luther said that uh, sin is the soul curving in on itself. And we did just the opposite. We opened mm -hmm. up, and that just gives me a lot of hope. That is that in itself is an inspiration. Now, um, when you read this, the Bible, you hear time and time again how good people come to the aid of people who are struggling, who are hungry. Which Bible stories have shaped your understanding of hunger and, and our call as Christians to be mindful of that and to, to feed and, and nourish our neighbors? One that really speaks to me is the story of Elisha and the widow in 2 Kings. 
and it was a time of famine. Uh, the widow had run out of money, had a measure of oil and, and meal, and then that was it. She would have to sell her children into slavery because the creditors were coming. And here comes this man of God and says, I'm hungry. And she, I could just imagine the thought bubble going, Who is he crazy? Uh, and then he, she said, okay. And so he, she made him this meal saying it's our last and now it's over. And he said, no, God provides. This is a rough paraphrase, of course, of the Hebrew. And, uh, and in fact, he says, you now are going to gather oil. So you'll never run out. So have your children and you get together as many vessels as you can, not too few. That, that's the, the really striking part in the story. And so they go out and keep bringing back these, these um, uh, vis vessels filled with oil until they were supplied for the, the rest of their time. The children were not having to be sold into slavery. And um, that's a hopeful story, not only because God truly provides, not only because of the faith of the woman who said, okay, I'll make you our last meal. But when the, the, the man of God, Elisha said, bring vessels and not too few. That's mm. just a great story about the generosity that, that we could yes. experience. You know, I've, every time I drink water, I'm aware that for half of the people on this planet, they have to walk hours a day to get their water. Every time I have a beautiful meal, I'm aware that a lot of people just pray for their daily bread one time a day. As a traveler, I can get out there and understand that reality. I'm so deep down in, just it's natural to be concerned about people who are hungry. And I'm so thankful that our Lutheran faith seems to have a real passion for this very struggle. Uh, how is it that, that uh, hunger is so integral to the mission of our work as members of the ELCA? Everyone has the possibility at some point to feel hunger, either just because your stomach is rumbling because it's late in the afternoon or real actual hunger that you've seen and I've seen where it's maybe one meal a day and that's not certain. So that's a universal human expression. Also, all cultures love to gather together at a table and break bread together or share a meal together. So this is a human experience. For Lutherans, uh, we believe, as uh, Martin Luther wrote, that we have been freed in Christ. So now we're free to serve our neighbor. And by doing that, we're, we're actually helping people to experience this abundant life that Jesus promised. This is not an extracurricular activity. This is part of what it means to live as people freed in Christ, to bring this, this sustenance to, to other people. And in a lot of ways, we're fed by them. You know, hunger is a reality. 10% of our planet is struggling with hunger. Hunger, 10%, that's that's a lot of people. That's about a billion people. It's tragic. It's, it's one of the biggest challenges facing our world today. And while a lot of challenges seem beyond our reach, to me, hunger is a tangible challenge. And it is realistic that we would be able to tackle hunger and overcome hunger. That's not a pipe dream. It's within our reach. We've cut hunger in half in the last uh, generation, and we're on a good trajectory if we can marshal our energy and be smart about it and to be together about it. When we come together as people of faith, I believe that ending hunger in our lifetime is within our grasp. In fact, I spent a lot of time in Ethiopian Guatemala a couple of years ago, researching, writing, and then filming a one-hour documentary on public television called Hunger and Hope. And when we put together this event today, I decided I've written this book. It's about 100 pages, and it is everything I learned and a lot of stuff I couldn't fit into the TV show about the excitement of tackling hunger. And I would like to just challenge everybody to get on board. And anybody who gives anything today during this event will get a copy of this book. And this is a book that really shows all of the, the excitement that's going on in the trenches in the developing part of our world. So again, anybody who pledges or gives a gift at any level today will receive a copy of this book, the book I wrote while I was in Ethiopian Guatemala, that'll give you an insight and make it more fun than ever to get on board and make ELC World Hunger get some traction. Now, the agenda of my work was to show that there is, well, the reality is half of the people on this planet are trying to live on $5 a day, and that's tough. But that's not desperation. Desperation is $2 a day. $2 a day, that's extreme poverty. That's where the hunger is. And that's what we are targeting. And again, we've cut 
to hunger remarkably in the last generation. But with climate change and with COVID and with conflict and with corruption, it's ticking up and we need to get into the trenches and continue this exciting challenge. So I wanted to show that there is smart and practical development uh, aid. You know, a lot of people tend to be a little bit cynical about development aid and old fashioned development aid deserved a little cynicism. Well-meaning as it may have been, it actually made people dependent. But modern development aid is amazing. It makes people independent. It empowers people. It gives people hope. And that's what I love about what ELC World Hunger does. It is so smart. The more I, I learn about what ELCA World Hunger does in the trenches with the money that we offer them to empower them, the more thankful I am to have ELCA World Hunger as an organization that can do my will in the developing world. So if that makes any sense to you, please understand the excitement of this event. Here's just a couple of minutes from the one hour special we produced. And I'd like to take you to Ethiopia and Guatemala right now to get a little glimpse of what I learned and, and why it made me so excited about the mission of ELCA World Hunger. Check this out. This program is about how those in extreme poverty, the poorest of the poor, are improving their lives by addressing very basic needs. Progress is incremental and it happens with a combined and coordinated effort. Smart non-governmental organizations or NGOs, the support of local governments, development aid and fair trade policies from wealthy countries, and most of all, hardworking local people. In Ethiopia, Abidi and his family are a good example. While still poor, they have a more modern home and are actually making progress. Abadi explained how he's running a productive small farm, growing enough for his family needs, with a surplus to sell. He showed me how a tank he fills with manure produces fertilizer. At the same time, it generates methane, or biogas. Abadi can now fire up his stove and boil water without using firewood. He has light even after the sun goes down. His home is spacious, with windows for ventilation and a sturdy tin roof. The old kerosene lamp grows dusty, as this light is now powered by a solar panel. And the same panel provides enough juice to charge their cell phones. The family has worked hard and has enough food stored to get them, hopefully, through the hunger season. And a few sheep share the courtyard until they're sold at the market to boost the family income. I just, let's see, there we go. I'm so, so thankful to be able to share what I learned in the trenches, to, to meet people, to walk with people like Abidi and see the, the dignity and the pride and the energy that he had. People across the world, they wanna work, they wanna produce, they wanna feed their kids. And it is impressive what we can do when we can give them a little help. You know, the in, that was just two minutes. You can see the entire one hour. The link is in the chat section, or you can just search for it. It's easy to find it streaming online. I will warn you, if you watch the whole hour, it, it can be kind of expensive because you will get so inspired about the work of ELC World Hunger that you'll want to get on board. ELC World Hunger knows the, the low-hanging fruit of development aid, where we get the most mileage out of our philanthropy. It, it gives people the ability to be productive and to get part of the, in, into the global economy. You know, it's a practical investment. That's really what I find. Supporting an organization that is smart about development aid, like ELC World Hungry, is flat out practical. It, it, it helps fight hunger as we're called to do as Christians, and it makes our world a more stable and in a more just place. So tonight we have a great opportunity to empower ELC World Hunger and to make a difference. Again, if you wanna get on board, you can go to elca.org slash and hunger and you can give directly to ELCA World Hunger. And as we do this, we've got this thing called a giving tractor that'll keep track of our gifts as they come in. And to learn more about like that, I'd like to welcome back Dan Rift. He's the director for ELCA World Hunger and Lutheran Disaster Response. And uh, Dan, uh, introduce us to this giving tractor, could you? Sure, Rick. I mean, it's a, exactly the same uh the same email that you see on the screen and that we've been talking about, elca.org uh, slash and hunger. Um, 
And if you go there, you can start to see how we are growing in our giving even this evening. Um, I think we are more than halfway. Uh, uh, we're, uh, I'm sorry, more than a quarter of way through the match. That's $100,000 and almost 10% of the way through our goal or our objective for this evening, which was $250,000. So we have a great start and a ways to go. Um, and I just want to thank everybody who's given and encourage folks towards that. You know, seeing the progress of giving is a reminder that we have an impact on hunger. The kind of programs that you talked about, Rick, and we're gonna hear more about in the interviews coming up, um, are the kind of programs where we don't do for, we work with. And that means our resources are matched and more by the local labor and energy of people who are working on their own behalf and for their children. Recently, I found out by following the example of my kids that you can both listen to this and open another window to give. So I'd encourage people to do that. Um, we have a lot of inspiring content ahead, and the greatest inspiration comes from the work that we have, but the, re the way in which we stand together um, around this world, around this country, to, to, uh, to work to end extreme hunger. The proof of our witness is the fruit that we bear in generosity. Rick, I'd like to pass it back to you so that you can help us to understand even more through the interviews that you've held, the kind of impact that we're having around the world. Yeah, and Dan, you know, I'm a Lutheran and I like to fight hunger, but I'm not just gonna give my money to EOC World Hunger if I don't have faith in its practicality and, and the caliber of the people that are working on behalf of us in ELCA World Hunger. And I had the joy and the privilege of talking to, to four or five wonderful people. And we're gonna share those interviews this evening in this coming hour. And uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like people to meet uh, Reverend Rafael Malpica Padilla. He's the executive director for the service and justice home area of the ELCA. And he oversees the ELCA's worldwide accompaniment programs, which includes ELCA world hunger efforts, both internationally and domestically. I was, I, I just so enjoyed talking to Raphael. Here's a little clip of our conversation. I hope you enjoy this. Reverend Raphael Malpica Padilla, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity to be in conversation with you. Now, I understand you were once the Bishop of the Caribbean Synod. That's correct. What a great beat. It was a great opportunity when the EOCA came together to serve uh, as bishop uh, in that synod that brings together uh, the people in Puerto Rico and the people in the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, a very multicultural uh, and bilingual uh, uh, territory for the uh, EOCA. In my work as a travel writer, I'm all about being sensitive to the culture. I like to say to become a temporary local, to be a cultural chameleon. Mm -hmm. And when we're gonna work on development aid, you're not gonna get to first base if you don't understand the local cultures. And ELCA World Hunger understands that. And it works collaboratively with organizations already in the trenches so that nobody's trying to win the award. We're just trying to fight hunger and love our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and, and that is so true. Um, uh, the work that we do through EOCA World Hunger is really important, but that work is always a second chair type of work. The first chair is always the community. And that really allow us to maximize those dollars that members of this church and community raise so that all are fed. We go into a community and we use the system that that community has in place, primarily churches. When NGOs come and go, what we see in the global experience is that those faith community always stays. They are the lifeline yes. for those communities. So an NGO may come and be uh, working there for three years. When we connect with those communities through uh, the support of EOCA World Hunger, we are there for the long haul because those faith community are deeply rooted and mm. are part of the lifeline, uh, part of the life of those communities around the globe. In my work, you know, I research, I write a script, 
I take the crew to make the TV show. We come home and we produce the show and then it airs on the public television. That's a five-year process. And then only after that, do more people know about me and buy my books or take my tours or something like that. But people look at my business and in the developing world, sometimes they cannot imagine the ability to plan for a long road. And when EOCA World Hunger is investing in a community, as you said, the Lutheran network there is so rooted that you've got that long road, you've got the consistency, you can invest now for the future, and it will be paying off for many, many years to come. It's a very practical way to fight hunger. And it is, a, uh, and, and it is required for us to engage in that uh, long-term view because the work that we do is not only to, to, to go there for a quick fix, Mm -hmm, it right. is to go there to really engage in a holistic, transformative, integrated work. And that takes time, that takes accompaniment, that takes walking together side by side with those communities. What I'm learning today is that there is a secondary value or a, a very practical value of the infrastructure in communities already in place by Lutheran churches in, in countries all across the planet. And if we can smartly mobilize those existing networks, they're already tuned into the cultural uh, intricacies. And it's just a natural sort of partnership to give our love some traction. That is uh, very important in the work we do. When we engage uh, with communities, we use the system that is in place. We don't go to duplicate. Uh, systems that uh, will not respond uh, to the local context. So that is a great advantage for us to use the systems uh, that our companion churches have developed throughout the years and other institutions with whom we partner. Pastor Rafael Malpica Padilla, thank you so much. I, I get a sense that you are very gratified with your work. It's a blessing to be able to make a difference. And it's a blessing for all of us to be able to make a difference by supporting all of you. And that's what this celebration today is all about. Talking with, with people like you gives me more confidence than ever of the smartness and the practicality of investing in ELCA World Hunger. Uh, it's just a program I'm so thankful to be a part of. And I just wanna remind people that this is a way where we can give our love traction. And I just wanna, on behalf of everybody watching, saying thank you for giving us the opportunity to support your work. God bless you. Thank you much. And thank you uh, to those people that will listen to you and view this video, and they will decide to support EOCA World Hunger because we are touching people's lives for the flourishing of human community. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know, what a delight to be able to talk with Pastor Raphael. And as I was watching that, I was just thinking, this is a celebration. There are so many good people dedicating their careers to fighting hunger. And I and you, we have an opportunity to empower them. We're on the same team. It's exciting. Now for our next special guest, we're going to go to Africa. And we're going to meet with Willie and Ann Lanji, and they currently serve as the regional representatives of the ELCA for West and Central Africa. They steward the relationships of the ELCA with companion churches and organizations in countries like Sierra Leone, Ghana, Cameroon, Senegal, and the Central African Republic. Now, many of the projects that Willie and Ann will be talking about, uh, they've been working on throughout West and Central Africa, and they are supported as partner projects by the ELCA World Hunger Program. So as we listen to Anne and Willie, remember they are working with us as we fund ELCA World Hunger. Let's get in on this conversation. Well, now we're joined by Anne and Willie Longji and they're coming to us from Cameroon. Anne and Willie, thanks for being with us. Happy Thank to you. be here. Happy to be here. This is such a great celebration of the international dimension of uh, ELCA uh, World Hunger. And uh, I'd like you to just take a moment and explain what is your work and, and how is it uh, connected with ELCA World Hunger? We are regional representatives of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. 
and specifically with service and justice or what was formerly known as global mission and that responsibility that we have is one that helps us to relate to as a church to relate to our companion churches here in the, in this region um, so that means also often working with companion churches as they carry out programs supported by world hunger and the elc world hunger funds that we've uh, found joint priorities for boy you know that is such important work Willie, I understand that you work with local women in animal husbandry, you know, crossbreeding cattle so they'll be healthier with climate change and uh, uh, working with uh, cows that, that give more milk but can handle the heat of Africa, uh, finding chicken that can uh, uh, lay more eggs, uh, you know, uh, uh, processing dairy so people have a little bit to sell in the market. And you work uh, primarily with women why the focus on women in that kind of work? The, the focus on women here is because with the Fulani community, the, the men own the cows, but the women own the milk. And so when you understand that uh, local dynamic, that uh, local dynamic that is there, you know that when the money goes into the woman's hands, it is going 99% into the family. So adding that kind of value to the milk for, for the woman means you're increasing the income for the whole family. And so that gives the opportunity to, to come in using uh, the uh, local indigenous knowledge, the local resources that are already there, and just bringing in one bowl, uh, which could be a hosting bowl, a Jersey bowl, or Mombelia, and you can cross this bowl with over 50 cows, 50 local cows. And one cow, the local cow produces one liter of milk a day, uh, in the, usually in the, in the rainy season when there's a lot of pasture. But when you cross it, you have a cow that is resist, resistant to the heat, produces 10 times, uh, 10 liters a day. Ah. And you can see how much income you that process is, produce, is putting into the hands of the whole family. Willie, yeah. I saw one of those cows in Ethiopia and it was treated like the super cow. You know, it could handle yes. the weather and it could give milk like it was in Switzerland. <laughs> That's great. And resistant to all kinds of diseases. I mean, we have, uh, there, there's the uh, foot and mouth disease, for example, that yeah. is common in that area. It will attack the local cow, but never the crossbreed. Okay, I got to jump in here because this is such an inspiration. And for people who are watching, if they could understand, this is again, what I call the low hanging fruit, find a cow, crossbreed it so it can live locally and so it can produce better. And then there is prosperity. That's smart development aid. And we, when we empower ELC World Hunger, we are empowering that kind of development. And that is love your neighbor, but it's also making our world a more stable and a safe place. We even have an example of a program in Sierra Leone that's supported by ELCA World Hunger that works in um, vocational skills training. And the mm -hmm. focus is really for young women so that they can develop skills that they might be, that empower them and give them opportunities. It will put them less at risk for gender-based violence which There's is so, if, essential. If we, yeah. we also, we the women too, we also know that we're raising sons and we yeah. want to raise our sons differently so that the situation will be different in the future. It's, and this same program also has boys. And one of the stories that they've highlighted recently is a boy who actually went to the catering program. And this huh. is a really unusual thing for a boy to do in that context. But he, he, his father died, his mother was not able to keep him in school. He went into this program on the encouragement of an older woman, a neighbor. And he has found joy in cooking, in baking. He's the only boy, but his mother is even encouraged and less depressed about their situation because she sees the transformation in her son. And he feels encouraged, despite the fact that he's the only boy among a mm. group of 
of girls. I am all about good investments. And when we can make something like that possible, I cannot imagine a better investment. You know, giving money today to help ELCA World Hunger empower the work of people like Willie and Anne all over this planet, <laughs> that gives our love traction. Of course, we've got love, but we don't want to spin our wheels. We want traction. And by putting, uh, putting gas in the tank for people who are working in, with this sort of loving passion, it's just a beautiful way for a Christian who wants to love your neighbor to actually make that happen. Willie and Ann, bless you in your work, and thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Rick, thank you for introducing us to Willie and Ann. You know, this is an opportunity, this is an evening for giving, for us to be able to make a commitment in naming this evening's program and consideration of World Food Day, we ask, what do we bring? What do we bring particularly to this effort? And we decided to name it People of Hope because that's where we stand. We are a people of hope. This evening, we encourage your giving. We've just passed the $50,000 mark and, and giving, and we ask that you might continue to, to keep the momentum but we also have a special gift for you. Our friend Peter Mayer um, has provided us with a brand new song. This group will be the first to hear this. It is a premiere of a new song that he has produced. Now, many of you might know Peter Mayer um, as the guitarist for Jimmy Buffett. Some of you know Peter Mayer because of his engagement with and involvement with the church. Some of you know him as a child of the church, having grown up in India in the mission field or been born into it. Uh, many of you know him because of his concerts, his Star and Promise concerts. Peter has been a voice of hope in so many ways for so many of us. Peter and Patricia Mayer contributed this evening, not only the music, its original composition, but also the cost for the accompaniment, for the editing, for the uh, video work. Um, and so I give you this evening, our friends, Peter Mayer. Thank you. 
wow, that was absolutely beautiful. And as I enjoyed that piece, it occurred to me, Peter wrote that and produced that just to be part of our celebration. We are on the same team and this is a great team. Every person, there's, there's, there's hundreds of families watching right now wondering, how can we empower ELC World Hunger? There are, there are so many opportunities for us collectively to make a difference. Hey, our next, and thank you, Peter, for that, that beautiful gift. I just thoroughly enjoyed every beautiful beat. Oh, what a blessing. Hey, our next special guest is Reverend Rebel Hurd. And she's a pastor at, she's the pastor at Church of the Street. It's a congregation uh, of the ELCA located in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And Church on the Street is a recipient of ELCA World Hunger's Big Dream Grant. And the ministry walks alongside those struggling with homelessness and hunger right there in Sioux Falls. Uh, you know, Rebel is such an inspiration. And, and she's a great example of how the success of tonight's event will do wonderful things both domestically as well as overseas. Let's get in on this conversation I enjoyed with Reverend Rebel. Well, it's fun for me to meet different people that are doing different inspirational things that are in sync with ELCA World Hunger. And I get now to talk to Reverend Rebel Hurd from South Dakota. And uh, Reverend Rebel, thanks for joining us. It's good to be here. Your ministry is something that could I'm, it accomplishes a lot right there on the ground, but it inspires people across the land. Uh, describe your mission in just a, a quick nutshell. Sure. Um, we are a ministry of uh, folks that go out onto the street. Um, we are primarily working with folks who are um, living in homelessness and poverty. And our mission is to take the gifts of the church out to the folks who, for whatever reason, do not feel comfortable going into the walls of the church to receive them. So it's pretty simple, but pretty big. Is, is Rebel your actual name? Because it seems like the perfect stage name for some super action character like you who's helping people on the streets of Sioux Falls. Rebel, what, what is that? What's the metaphor there? Oh, my goodness. My mother says uh, now that she knew I was going to be a rebel before I was even born. And I'm pretty sure that this is not exactly the path she thought I'd go down. <laughs> <laughs> well, rebel, Reverend Rebel, I, I, I think it's got a good ring to it. You know, love thy neighbor is something a lot of Christians throw around. It's pretty clearly Christ-like. Um, with your mission, you are the epitome of love thy neighbor. Uh, how does how do you how does faith motivate your work? That's a good question. Um, one of the things that I, I learned probably the first year of doing ministry is folks truly believe that they are simply not good enough. They are not rich enough. They are not loved enough. They are not worthy enough. And so we have really taken a stance when we are out on the street to remind people over and over and over, you are loved, you are enough, and you are a child of God. And when they doubt that, we point them right back to Genesis 1:31, where God looked around at all that God made and it was good. And so it is, it is again, just living out what we, I believe collectively believe, right? And to live out this work in such an important way that people understand that this is about justice. This is about loving our neighbor. And it's really important work and it is so much fun. <laughs> You know, Rebel, listening to you just um, makes me want to give money to ELCA World Hunger to empower people like you, and you're one of many people who are so passionate and so effective. How does support from ELCA World Hunger, which we're raising money for today, how does that actually trickle down and empower you to do the work you're talking about right now? We could not do the work without the funds that we have received from the ELCA World Hunger. We have been blessed to receive a few different grants. And yes, we are delivering food with those funds, yes, but we're also delivering hope. Mm. There is so much more that comes with the food. Um, we have a little sweet girl who every single time she sees me, runs down the street to look in my backpack to see what food that I have. 
-hmm. We have families who live in cars that know that if they cannot get to the places where food is delivered because they are working jobs while living in cars, that we will make sure that they receive food. It is the bread of life in many, many ways. And so it's really, it's so important. I, I could never put it into proper words, but it's huge. I would hope and pray that people who are watching us right now, being inspired by your work, would remember if we provide the funds through ELCA World Hunger to help people like you get traction in your work, we are there with you. We are together as a team. And I do not like to think of this initiative as a charity. This is a service. I'm a Christian. I care about hungry people. I care about loving my neighbor. I, I think, what would Jesus do? And I can empower you. And by, when I say you, I mean people like you who are doing this kind of work. And it's just a practical investment. I'm so thankful for the work that you're doing. And uh, I hope people can, can, can see that connection that we can indirectly, we can vicariously do that. And that makes this all just a big celebration and just a, a festival of teamwork. Yes, this is it. It takes a village to care for a village. And I will be here on the margins with the folks who are considered the last, the lost and the least. And I will keep working it and preaching it. And there are so many, so many people, so many that do this work for mm. ELCA. And it is just amazing. And we couldn't do it without ELCA Word Hunger. Yeah, Reverend Rebel Hurd, pastor of the Church of the Street in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You are an inspiration. And even better than that, you representing all the people in the United States and across the sea that are taking ELCA World Hunger funds and turning it into action. You are just um, such a blessing. And, and a lot of people say, we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. You know, we'll pray for them. This is how prayers are answered. What, what, what you are doing <laughs> is answering prayers. God bless you in your work. And, and thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. It was great to be with you all today. Well, thanks to all of the interviewees, uh, you can see the remarkable work that they do on our behalf and that we do uh, to serve God's people all around the world and on the streets of South Dakota um, and other places in this country. So thank you for those uh, hardworking folks who are out there uh, making a difference. And thank you to all of you watching now that you helped to fuel this, this effort. You know, um, uh, responding to hunger is, as I said before, is not is not a, um, an extracurricular activity or an add-on as, a, as a, a Lutheran Christian. Um, when we pray uh, in the Lord's Prayer, give us today our daily bread, we really are asking God to give us all those things that make life uh, safe, uh, sustainable, and with dignity. So thank you for all of that. And just to let you know, ELCA World Hunger has a lot of resources for your family, for you, for your congregation. Um, as you get involved in ending hunger, which is possible to do in our lifetime. Uh, as we approach the holiday season, the ELCA World Hunger Advent, Advent Packet has come. It came to my house. I already have my Advent Packet. There's a whole variety of materials there. Um, there's an Advent study. There is, this is my favorite here. As you can always get these. There's an Advent calendar dealing with themes about, about hunger and also feeding people. Um, there's, a, there's an action guide with lots of ideas you can bring to your congregation about how to create and support your own hunger ministry. Um, also, uh, this weekend is uh, World Food Day on October the 16th. And we like to think about World Food Day not just as a day, but as a, as a state of mind and a way of being the year round. Uh, it's calling us to face the challenge and, and really bring about this intention God has where all are fed. Whether it's giving um, tonight, which is wonderful, to, to ELCA.org and hunger or starting a new feeding ministry in your community, that's all welcome. And Dan, just one more time, can you tell us what's happening uh, with the tracker? 
Well, we need more than one more time, Bishop. We're right now we're at $60,620. I know that there are folks who are on the phone right now, and I really want to encourage people to call. I, uh, we have a wonderful group of folks who are uh, on the phone uh, talking with people as they're giving gifts and answering questions. Um, that is 800-638-3522, and then hit option number two, and it'll take you right to them. Um, and uh, we are making great progress into this evening. We've heard from so many friends and from new folks who we've never um, known before who are giving to ELCA World Hunger. I really want to thank everyone who's here. Um, uh, Rick, great. Um, I was waiting to see you because one of the things that thrills me is that people are going to see that book uh, oh. and receive it as part of our time together. The Hunger and Hope book, and I uh, really want to encourage people also to go online and to listen to the full hour or in pieces to the full hour of what you have done. It is just a masterful um, commitment to uh, to articulating how hope meets hunger in the world. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, Dan, you know, there is hunger and there is hope. I, I'm so filled with hope because I've been privileged enough to go and see the work in action. And if we could put everybody on a little tour and go to Guatemala or go to Ethiopia or go to Africa and meet Willie and Ann and all of these people who are making such a difference, we would be so inspired. And part of my work as a travel writer is to give people here at home the value of that travel. Because when you travel, you connect and you realize the, the intimate closeness that we have if we are enlightened about it with this whole notion that we're all children of God. When I page through this book, I see people's struggles that we can make a difference on. When I look at Abadi, we saw him earlier, Dan, this beautiful man here. And um, a year before or, or a generation before, his father was growing corn, hoping only to feed his family. Now Abadi, with his father's land, he is growing corn for his family and much more and extra produce for the market. His kids are educated and he, is, he has the dignity of being able to work hard feed his family and get ahead. If everybody could walk like we did to these health posts that are off the grid and see all of the mothers with their children coming in for instruction made possible by organizations like ELCA World Hunger that teaches women the importance of nutrition and hygiene so their kids can be well-nourished and grow up not stunted, but productive it makes a huge difference. And then when you see the little girls and the little boys who are the recipients of this kind of practical age, their bright eyes, their hopeful futures, you realize that happens because we are all in this together. And today you can take thousands and thousands of beautiful little girls and boys like that, and you can help their fathers and their families be productive. This is this man's name is Pedro, and he's in Guatemala, and he grows snap peas. He doesn't even like to eat snap peas, but he knows that's good for the market. And he grows snap peas on land that he owns free and clear. A couple of years ago, he was just working in the plantation, whacking sugar cane, and pretty much a, uh, in, a, in a miserable state. Now, when he's growing those peas, I was with him. He says, when I walk through my peas, it's like walking through money. And those peas are sold in London. And he and his family have the dignity to stay home, not trying to go to a, a, up to across the border, but to stay home and invest in their future. We're making that possible. And hey, Rick, anybody... You know, who, oh, yes. I just think the word resilience is what keeps coming up, uh, uh, going together with hope. Now, I know that... There was somebody very special who uh, helped you to prepare your work in that. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, you want to tell me about that? Yes, yeah, David Beckman. He's a fellow Lutheran pastor and our fellow Lutheran, a, a wonderful pastor who uh, is has de dedicated decades for decades. He was running bread for the world. And David's been my mentor. And he helped me research this book on my scouting trip. And I want to remind people, anybody who's going to get on board today at any level will receive a copy of this book, and it'll be the next best thing to be in there. I hope that you can remember that comes as a thank you when you support us today. And David Beckman, he's our guest of honor this evening. And I, I'd like to invite Bishop Eaton now to share a few words about Pastor Beckman and his lifetime service in fighting to end hunger. 
Thanks, Rick. The ELCA is a church that's called to respond to the crisis of hunger. We are a church that rolls up its sleeves and gets to work. I'm so excited about this privilege to recognize the Reverend David Beckman, whose career has been defined by these same values and whose work to end hunger has been truly transformative and groundbreaking. For his lifetime service to end hunger, the ELCA celebrates and honors the Reverend David Beckman. Reverend David Beckman, who is an ordained Lutheran pastor, is one of the foremost US advocates for people struggling with hunger and poverty in the United States and around the world. David Beckman recently ended his tenure as president of Bread for the World and Bread for the World Institute, where he served from 1991 until 2020, leading large scale and successful campaigns to overcome hunger and poverty in the United States and around the world. During David's tenure at Bread for the World, it grew to a network of 2 million people and 3,000 local churches. He also led Bread for the World Institute, which does complementary research and education, and founded Alliance to End Hunger, which engages diverse organizations in building the public and political will to end hunger. Now, to represent this wonderful work and to thank David for this wonderful work he has done in his career, we have commissioned a piece of art from Christian Chavaria, an artist from El Salvador. Christian experienced the effects of war and poverty as a young man during the Salvadoran Civil War. He and his family fled the country, and as an eight-year-old in a refugee camp, he also started painting. Eventually, Chavaria returned to his home country where he set up a workshop with the help of the Lutheran Church. And now his art can be seen in places such as the Chapel of the Ecumenical Center in Geneva. Christian's story and its intersection with ELCA world hunger seems fitting tribute to David's lifetime work of fighting hunger. On behalf of the ELCA world hunger community and all who have been impacted by your life-changing work, I say thank you. Thank you, David, for your commitment to a just world where all are fed. Wow, David's story is such an inspiration. And I got to sit down with him and just recently and talk about his amazing lifetime of work and why he believes so strongly in what we are all about this evening, fighting hunger. Let's listen right now to David Beckman. Reverend David Beckman, it's, I've just been looking forward to this chance to talk with you and share both of our passion for fighting hunger and doing it through our faith and uh, in particular, our Lutheran uh, faith. Uh, 15 years at World Bank and then 29 years as president of Bread for the World. And now you're leading church advocacy on the huge bills that Congress is working on and learning and teaching at Union Theological Seminary and sharing it all on social media. Uh, you know, you're far from retired. <laughs> you're, uh, so you're an economist, a pastor, and you're being honored today for your lifelong work, your calling to end hunger. And I know you have told me for 20 years, this is a realistic goal. And I believe it is. And we are, um, I think, deserving of feeling hopeful in this challenge. So we're thanking you today for your amazing career. It's, it's no wonder that you're being honored today with a, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And clearly, your work is far from finished. Now, you and I are both Lutheran Christians. And it, it seems that Lutherans have a big place in our heart for fighting hunger. Um, have you noticed that? I mean, does th that commitment to ending hunger, does it have something to do with our, our church's emphasis on God's grace? I, I think very much so. I mean, first, um, I'm proud and inspired by what Lutherans have done. Lutherans really focused uh, on hunger in 1974 and have never let it go. Um, you know, I think bureaucracies sometimes have tried to, to shift the focus and the Lutherans themselves just keep sending money, keep, you know, keep organizing around the hunger issue. And, uh, uh, and I think more than any other religious group in the country have been faithful mm -hmm. in that uh, vocation. So I think especially all the people who are at this event, you, Rick, and all the other people who are at this event, uh, you deserve a Lifetime Achievement Award <laughs> because a lot of you have been at this uh, for a, a long time. And it is, in fact, in fact, 
it is grounded in our uh, tradition's special emphasis on grace and forgiveness. Tell me about why you embrace ELCA World Hunger just as a smart organization. I like the way that they work with partners on the ground mm -hmm. and they form long-term partnerships. Uh, early in, right at the beginning of my career, I spent a year in Bangladesh with, uh, Lutheran, with Lutheran Relief and Development there in Northwest Bangladesh. But <clears throat> so I know that their, their practice in, when there are big crises and there are hundreds of thousands of people who are desperate, the, the, the Lutherans come in and they provide relief, but then they don't leave when the crisis is over. Hmm. They then move with those people back to their homes and stay there for 10 or 15 years and they yeah. build permanent institutions. So that's the kind of smarts that they've got. And then the other thing is they do it in the name of Jesus. Ah. So, you know, you kind of, it's, it's, I mean, it's, not, you know, if they're working in a Muslim country, they don't put, probably don't put crosses on their trucks. Right. But people, a lot of people see that this is being done in the name of Jesus. And that, in fact, is our motivation. I like working at Bread for the World because, you know, we're trying to change the world in Jesus' name. And the ELCA world hunger uh, is in the same way, in a more, uh, in a comprehensive way, including assistance and development mm -hmm. and then also advocacy. ELCA World Hunger is, is changing, is trying to live out, trying to make the world more consistent with the fact that God loves everybody. You know, Christians like us who have a, a big heart for, for, for certain causes, one of the joys of being a caring Christian is, is you do have the delight of choosing what areas you want to dig into. And I am just so excited about the fight to end hunger. And I'm so thankful. There's people like you and people like our church leadership and also organizations like ELCA World Hunger that can give our love some traction. And uh, I just want to thank you for your work, David. Congratulations on the, the uh, celebration of your lifetime achievement. And I want to remind people who put that award together that it's not like a period yet. It's a dot, dot, dot. There is lots more to come <laughs> because we're all in this together. So right. God bless you and your work. And, and thanks for joining us today. God bless everybody here. Wow, what a great chance to have David Beckman with us this evening. And, and uh, David, it's just, you're the man for that honor. I'm so inspired by David's work. And you know, I've known David long enough to know that he's a very practical person. He was a big shot in the World Bank, uh, and then he takes his expertise in international finances and so on and implements that uh, to smartly fight hunger. And, and David does not just support any group that's out there crusading against hunger. David is very select about that. And he knows the smartness of ELCA World Hunger. And just in preparing for this event today, I learned a lot more about how smart ELCA World Hunger is and practical. This is a practical investment. It not only does, you know, loves your neighbor and takes care of hungry people, it makes our world more stable and more just. And it's a very, very practical thing we're doing right now. Hey, Dan, as director of ELCA World Hunger Funding, you're in charge of this entire fundraising initiative. Now, I'm the travel guy, and you're the theologian and the policy wonk. I've got a few questions about how the ELCA is fighting hunger and poverty. And first of all, it's a big responsibility to, to call a bunch of good, caring people together and ask for money. And then it's a matter of stewardship to use it smartly. Can you assure us or just explain to us what's unique about the ELCA? There, there's a lot of good development organizations out there. Why would somebody choose to support the ELCA? It's more than just being a member of this religious club. Sure, um, I'm glad to, Rick. I mean, first of all, if uh, we really believe, and uh, I have seen over uh, three decades now that the church is an essential actor in this space, critical to the work that we do. We are a herald[er] of hope. We are. Uh, we have developed some of the best practices. We are the folks who stand with communities uh, and who empower and encourage communities um, towards the future to have that kind of hope. Uh, if it, if we don't support the church's initiative then the church is not able to be in this space, to bring this uh, to practical um, reality around this country and around the world, to show, show that kind of love. 
there is nothing more important to me than the trust that is placed in us when people make gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that is carried out. Uh, I hope that this evening people have a sense of the enthusiasm, the encouragement that um, comes with the kind of work that we do as a church when we're addressing hunger uh, in this country and around the world. I'm so thankful for the work that you are all coordinating and doing. I, I'm so inspired by people who dedicate their lives, as I keep saying, in the trenches to making a difference. And it, it's heartbreaking to think that sometimes they don't have enough financial support to do the work they are trying to do. We want that work done. I want that work done, but I'm not the person to go down there and do it. <laughs> I, I'm much better doing my little thing as a tour guide. But what I want to do is invest in people who are making a difference. Now, as the ELCA deals with this as smartly as possible, it's a big world. There, there's lots of need in way more countries than we could be substantially involved in. How do you choose where to work globally? Well, our commitment is to work as church with churches or with church related organizations. And so we really are in a process of discernment with our partners, with our companions about um, where the church is being called in a hungry world to make a difference, to follow uh, in the uh, pathways of Jesus is uh, to be able to share and break and share bread, but in a way that makes a sustained difference. And so we are following the leads uh, in each community where we are. We look at the objectives, we look at the needs, we look at the possibilities and try to invest where we are. Now, quite honestly, we certainly could expand the program. The only thing holding us back is the resources that are available um, to us. And each year, you know, we build this program out of gifts that are given uh, some large, some not as large. It takes all of us. You know, David's comment that um, that there are heroes responding to hunger around this country, around this church, the lifetime achievement of so many that are hunger leaders, that are contributors, that work in their own congregations are really a true inspiration. Um, Tonight, we particularly are working on support of the work that we do together as ELCA World Hunger. And one of the things that I really love is the at the giving, on the giving page, through our uh, instruments, through our communication, you can see the gifts of any level can really make a difference. $30 can help with vaccination of children. $75 can help stock a health clinic. Um, I love the microloan at $125 because that is a deep commitment to be able to help people to invest in their own future and then recycle that those resources through the community. But then we have other gifts that are larger, a simple water well of $2,500, $5,000 for training and seeds and tools for farmers in a whole community. Um, goodness sake, it's not even on here, but $25,000 can support a vocational training program in, and that can resonate and change the trajectory of a, whole, of a generation in a community. That's the kind of work that we're asking people to commit to. You know, Dan, I was just doing, as I was talking with Willie and Ann, I was thinking how much farther our, our charitable dollars can go when invested in the developing world. We've got very important needs in our communities. In my community here, we're, we're investing more than $10 million in a, in, a, in a senior center, in a community center. It's a great thing. It's a great value. But I was in Guatemala and for $5,000, they were bringing their community a senior center and a community center. And I was thinking, I did the arithmetic, that's 2,000 community centers could be, be built in Guatemala for what we're spending in my community for one. And the need south of the border is so great. I love as a person who can empower ELC World Hunger with a donation to know a little bit about what my gift can do. On your list there, you had $2,500 for a well. When I turn on my water in the morning, I just assume there's water, but I don't, I, I have to remind myself the average lot for women in, in this planet is to abandon their children every morning and walk for water for several hours. And now when we spend $2,500, we bring not one family, we bring an entire village safe running water right there in the village square. And then all of those moms stay home instead of abandoning their kids. And when they pump that water, 
they're bringing that healthiness, that, that vibrancy, that hope to their community. And we're making that possible with our gifts. There are so many ways that we make a difference. One of my very favorites is the super cow, Dan. Uh, when I was in uh, Ethiopia, they had it like a in a shrine, this cow, and it was crossbreed, an African cow that can uh, stand the hot weather in Africa and in the, in the environment, and a Swiss cow that gives all sorts of milk. They put it together and they get this super cow. They had two of them. And, and for a few hundred dollars, you could buy a couple of super cows in a town and they would breed them. And it's a gift that keeps on giving. I'm all about good values, man, and finding good deals. This is the kind of deal that just makes me so excited to be able to be a part of. So we've got a chance right now. We're getting right close to the end. I want to remind all of you out there, if you've been inspired, please get on board, make a difference. I want to remind you again that you'll get a copy of this book that gives you a whole education. It's like you stole away with me in Ethiopia and Guatemala. That's my gift to you. If you can just get on board and let's empower ELCA World Hunger now with our generous support. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rick. Um, we are closing in here, um, just over 70,000. So that cow, $500, could become $1,000 still tonight. And that's really wonderful. Bishop Eaton uh, has an opportunity to um, uh, bring us a final word in prayer as we uh, go out. But before that, we want to hear from Dr. Armstrong. Dr. Armstrong uh, is the uh, professor of music at St. Olaf and the uh, lead of the St. Olaf Choir. Um, Dr. Armstrong has a word for us, uh, and then we'll conclude by the opportunity to, um, to hear a benediction from Bishop Eaton and then our postlude from the St. Olaf Choir. I just want to thank everybody that's been here tonight. And to thank you particularly, Rick, for your leadership this evening in, uh, in our gathering together. You bring an enthusiasm that is uh, infectious and um, a real desire to see a world that is filled with hope. You're learning, uh, uh, you're encouraging us to learn and to see the world with new eyes, with eyes of faith are a true inspiration. Thank you, Rick. Well, Dan, thank you. And if I could just say it one more time, a lot of people talk about this as a charity. It's more than a charity. It's a service. It enables us to do what we want to do with our lives here on earth, and that is to love our neighbors with gusto, with so much, with so much impact. And uh, Dan mentioned that there will be a beautiful postlude by the St. Olaf Choir. Normally during the postlude, we, that's the time we walk out of church. But right now, let's take that postlude after our benediction from uh, Bishop Eaton. And let's think about how we've been inspired by this last hour and all the good work that's being done. And then let's use that postlude for what we talk about in uh, public television as music to pledge by. Let that inspire you to make a difference. Thank you very much for having me. Now let's listen to Dr. Armstrong. Hello. I am Anton Armstrong, Tazdal Professor of Music at St. Olaf College and the conductor of the St. Olaf Choir. Today, I'm here to ask your support of the ELCA world hunger efforts to eradicate hunger throughout the world. This ministry has informed me in ways that I simply was ignorant about. First of all, there is 1.5 times enough food in the world for everyone to be fed, yet more than 800 million people, that's one in nine in the world today, face chronic hunger. More people are displaced than at any time since after World War II. Something I should have realized, but I did not. Hunger is not caused by scarcity. Hunger is caused by inequity. Global hunger rates are decreasing. In the 1970s, one in four people faced chronic hunger. Today, the ELCA World Hunger is your church at work, committed to pursuing a just world where all are fed. The program addresses the root causes of hunger and poverty around the world using a variety of strategies. These include, first of all, starting by listening to 
our neighbors, and building relationships. Secondly, the ELCA hunger efforts walk alongside our companion churches and partners who tailor solutions to the unique challenges that perpetuate hunger and poverty in their communities. ELC World Hunger is at work in 63 countries, 41 states and territories. And the areas of work include agriculture and nutrition, water and sanitation, health care and prevention, income and savings, education and training. As part of this presentation today, I am pleased to be able to share with you a wonderful musical composition that speaks to the need to feed, feed all people, but especially our children who are at risk. The Canticle of the Hungry Angel is written by African-American composer Robert Harris. You'll hear it performed by the St. Olaf Choir. Today, I ask your support of this important endeavor. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Armstrong. Listen, as extra incentive, and they don't know I'm gonna do this, if you give it the $2,500 level, making a well possible, I will record a message on your voicemail as your personal administrative assistant. But thank you all tonight for, um, for being with us, for the generosity you continue to ex exhibit, and thanks to God also for the gifts that God gives us every day. And I'll close with the ELCA World Hunger Prayer. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Blessed be God, who is our bread. May all the world be clothed and fed. Amen.